Hey, what's up? Today I'm gonna share with you one of the evergreen traps in the Sicilian defense that you can use as white against the Sicilian defense. In particular, in the dragon variation of the Sicilian defense, which happens after the black's move pawn to g6. Black is obviously going to fiancato their bishop on the next move, and while anticipating black to do so, you're playing pawn to f4, which sets this clever trap. It's called living fish variation, and in fact it's been around for a long, long time, but people keep falling into this trap over and over again like crazy. Let me share with you the statistics of this opening here. In the bottom right corner you can see the statistics from the game database. And you can see that still the most played move for black is bishop to g7, which is kinda run. And after that, after white goes pawn to e5 and we trade the pawns, you can see that black goes knight g4 and knight to d5, which are also losing by force. It's pretty remarkable that the most played moves in this line are just losing for black, and now I'm gonna show you exactly how you can take advantage of them. All right, we're coming back to the to the board, and here, what if black goes bishop g7? They usually do so because again, it just makes sense. They just played pawn g6 on the next on the previous move, preparing a bishop to g7, and therefore they just go ahead and play it. But the problem with this move is that it allows white to kick off that early attack in the center by pushing pawn to e5 and starting to attack the black knight. And even though it looks like a very simple threat to handle, in fact it causes a lot of uh, troubles for black. Let's take a look. First of all, black would probably trade off the pawns, and now the black knight needs to go away somewhere. They usually go to one of these three squares, and we're gonna analyze all these variations, and let's start off with knight to g4, which looks the most aggressive, like is simply trying to capture your pawn. In this case, you play bishop b5 check, and at this point, black may already realize that something is going wrong, because it's not that easy to stop you know, this check somehow, because they can't go knight c6, you're controlling the square two times and you can just grab the knight and win material afterwards, therefore that's not an option for black really. If they play bishop d7, the move which looks the most natural, in this case is just losing because you can take advantage of the pin and simply capture the knight for nothing. Because of the pin, black cannot recapture and thus you're just winning that knight of black for nothing, you're winning the knight. Therefore, black actually has to go king to f8, hoping that in this case they would save the knight on g4, which is kind of true, but on the opposite side of the coin, they are actually losing the game due to another interesting tactical motif. I'll give you a second so that you can find it out yourself. How would you play here as white? And the winning move for white here is knight to e6 check which is checked to the black's king, and at the same time it's also a discovered attack of the black's queen. Therefore, in this line you're just beautifully winning the game in 11 moves. Or coming back to the starting position of this variation, black goes bishop g7, you push the pawn forward, attacking the knight. We just analyzed that knight g4 is simply losing for black after you give in check to the black's king. What if they go knight to d5? That's another naturally looking move which is also losing, and the reason is quite similar. You still go bishop b5 check, which again creates kind of similar problems for black. They can't play bishop d7. In this case, black still loses the knight, even though it's on another square, but somehow they still just lose it, because notice the black's queen does not support the knight anymore, and therefore white can just capture it. Therefore, bishop d7 still doesn't work. And if not bishop d7, they would again have to move their king away, which is already bad because it makes the king vulnerable and locks the rook there in the corner so that it can't operate in the future. In this case, you just castle, which in this case not only puts your king in safety, but also puts your rook on such a deadly attacking position. Here your opponents will very often hope to trade off the knights by capturing your knight on c3, but instead of recapturing, you would surprise them with a move knight to e6. We kind of saw a similar motif before. Again, this is check and discovered attack to the black's queen, therefore you'll capture the queen on the next move, winning the game. Therefore, black can't go there. Let's take a move back. Instead of knight takes c3, what else can black possibly play? They can also capture your pawn on e5, which also looks like it makes sense, they are capturing the pawn, putting some pressure on your knights, hoping to also hide the king there, 
on GSON, but in this case there is also a beautiful continuation of your attack. First of all you can trade off the knights and then you go bishop h6 check. You definitely want to keep the king there locked so that it can't hide away in that pretty nice square g zone. After bishop to h6 check, if they go bishop g7, trying to cover the king and provoke some exchanges, there are a couple beautiful ways for white to finish the game. One of them is bishop c4, which is also a very unusual combination and really beautiful actually. The most obvious idea is that you're attacking the queen directly and indirectly you're also hitting that f1 square with your bishop and rook. Therefore, black needs to do something about that. Um, by the way, notice that they can't just capture the knight because in this case, after you recapture, the black's bishop is pinned. Therefore, it cannot capture a queen, so that is losing. Let's take a move back. And in this case, if they would capture the bishop, which is probably the most natural thing to do, you still deliver the same trick knight to e6, but in this case the reason is different. Earlier your idea was to capture black's queen on d8, but in this case you just go there to d8 without any captures, actually with sacrifice and material, and yet it's still very effective. <laughs> this is just checkmate. I'm coming a few moves backward, and here we analyze that bishop g7 is losing after you uh, implement this really beautiful sacrifice bishop to c4. But what if black goes king to g8? In this case I'd like to ask you to think about this and to find the winning continuation for white. Please think about it and write it down in the comments below. It's interesting because white has a, a couple of attacking ideas here, and but you need to find the strongest. Feel free to pause the video, think about it, write it down in the comments below and then resume watching the video. Now let me show you another interesting variation. White still goes pawn to e5, and at this point we already discussed knight to g4. We started talking about bishop to b5, after that you go bishop b5, check, king goes to f8, and there you castle. In this case, we notice that uh, taking your knight or, or the pawn is losing for black, and in, in one game they actually played the solid looking move pawn to e6, just trying to solidify their you know, position in the center, protect the knight, also to cover that e6 square that somehow was fatal for them so frequently. In this case, in, in one of the games, white played queen to f3, preparing the very straightforward checkmate. Black played queen to c7 to cover that square, and white played a bit mysterious move bishop g5, which, you know, looks like it doesn't make that much sense, and black just played knight to c6 to develop the knight. But after that, white actually launched a pretty powerful tactical shot bishop to d8 and it turned out that that was the idea of white playing bishop g5 earlier. They actually prepared the move bishop d8 trying to deflect the black's queen from the protection of the f7 square and therefore if black just move the queen away from the 7th rank somehow, let's say if they go queen b7 like they did in the game, white actually played bishop takes c6 to further push black to do so and after black finally removed the queen from the 7th rank, white delivered the checkmate. What I really like about this whole variation is that there are so many beautiful checkmates and attacking opportunities for white and that's why I really love playing it myself. If you like these lines as well, don't forget to like this video so that I'll share more videos like that with you in the future. And we're moving on to the final line that we need to analyze. We analyze that the moves knight to g4 as well as knight to d5 are just losing quite, you know, quite immediately I'd say, because really within the next few moves you are very likely to win the game. And the best move is knight to d7, even though it looks bad actually for black because white can, and probably should, push the pawn forward to e6, attacking the knight and also the f7 pawn. In this case, what can black do? Well, just taking there is probably bad because after that you deliver your knight to e6, which creates just too much pressure onto the black's position and black does not want that. It's much better for them to move the knight away. What if they move the knight back to f6? In this case, the of course you can just take there an f zone, that is also perfectly good for white, but the line which I like even more is just to play bishop b5 check. Taking advantage of the situation that temporarily, because of your pawn on e6, black cannot play bishop d7 or knight to d7, and therefore they would have to move their king away. 
And after that, if you simply cancel, black suddenly realizes that they have nothing to do. <laughs> it's a really funny position because uh, think about this, they can't really take on e6, they can never do this because in this case you recapture with check and on the next move you grab the queen by your own queen. So that is just losing. And if not that, then what can they really do? You know, there are rooks stuck there, there are kings stuck, they can't normally develop their pieces and their king is in danger. So on top of all the other problems they have. If they try to kick your bishop away, you just move it back. It does not really help black at all. Your bishop on b3, in fact, is only helping you to capture that pawn f7 in the future. And again, black still can't really move at all. While well, you're just going to take that pawn and play knight e6 check and win the game. It's a pretty funny line how hopeless black is in this variation. You may be thinking, Igor, it can't be all that bad for black. They haven't played any really bad moves so far. Why is it that they're losing so badly? And you're right. There is a way for black to escape and to save the game, but of course it's really hard to find it and practically your opponents will either go knight g4 or knight to d5. The best move is knight to d7 and after you push the pawn to move the knight not to f6, which is losing, but to e5. And in this case it keeps the black's position. After you trade off that pawns on f7 and you play bishop b5 check, uh, finally black can cover their king without any uh, other you know, bad things happening to them. And in this case, black is doing fine. You can just castle and play on. What's good about this line is that white's position is still better. Even if black managed to save the game, you're still slightly better because black has a little bit of weaknesses here in the center. But again, it's playable and definitely black can play on here. In this video, we analyzed how you can handle the Sicilian defense, in particular the dragon uh, variation of the Sicilian defense as white. You may also check out my other video, the bishop's opening, where I cover how you can handle the e5 response of black very effectively with this bishop c4 move, and I'm showing you all the following resulting attacking variations. It's getting like over 300,000 views already, so people are really liking it because it's really effective, and you may check this out as well. I wish you have a great rest of the day and I'll talk to you soon.